Now, from Louisiana's News Channel, this is 9 News at 10. Hi, I'm Andre Morrow. And I'm Donna Britt. If you have not done so already, you're probably getting ready to file your taxes by the April 17th deadline. Yes, so are thousands of other people, many who are behind bars, defrauding the system, costing you money. Here's the I-Team's Kieran Chawla with her investigation, Paid in Prison. I mean, I don't think it's right. If they not working, then they shouldn't be able to file taxes. I'll be taken aback because I didn't think that prisoners filed taxes at all. It's an age-old practice. People filing false federal taxes. Now it's made its way behind bars and inside Louisiana prisons. The latest figures from Louisiana alone, more than 1,000 inmates filing fraudulent tax returns in 2009. Louisiana has a problem. Mark Shirley is a former Internal Revenue Service fraud investigator. He says inmates, just like every citizen, are required to file taxes every year if and only if they have any income. Thomas Bickham is in charge of the state's inmates. We do have offenders in our system that legitimately do need to claim uh, income tax files. Um, some of them um, either had income before they came to prison. Some of them are receiving pension checks. So there are legitimate reasons uh, for our offenders um, uh, to file an income tax return. But it's the ones who are not entitled to refunds who are stealing millions from the U.S. Treasury and taxpayers like you. A federal investigation of returns filed in 2009 identifies almost 45,000 prisoners across the country who filed fraudulent tax claims. Louisiana had 1,065 of those refunds. 668 came from parish and private jails around the state. Among the larger prisons, Angola had 50, while Dixon, 42. That's news to the man who is in charge of supervising inmates filing there. I've been at Dixon Correctional Institution for approximately 18 years, and to my knowledge, I've never heard of a fraudulent claim here at this particular institution. In that same year, fraudulent inmate returns from Louisiana totaled more than half a million dollars. Money inmates stole right under the government's nose. So how are they getting away with it? David Gunn is a local attorney specializing in tax fraud. If you have a return on which no social security number is reported, or a suspicious social security number and things like that, typically the IRS would catch that. At least that's what the IRS should do. However, the report found many cases where inmates filed incomplete claims, but those claims were never flagged by the IRS and the stolen refunds were given to inmates. The numbers are shocking. Of all the claims filed by prisoners, investigators found thousands had missing or inaccurate information, including false social security numbers, made up birthdays, some even dating back to the 1800s. The IRS has an electronic fraud detection system, but prisoners can outsmart technology. For example, former IRS agent Mark Shirley says, if all the information is filled out, even if it's made up, the return is approved by the electronic system. But if something is left blank, it's then flagged and denied, which according to investigators is one reason why not enough bad returns are being caught. Since 2004, the problem has more than doubled. Where do you see the future for this? Increasing steadily because we don't have the mechanisms in place with which to deal with it. Another big issue that's made it easier for inmates to file fake returns and not get caught Federal law previously prevented agencies such as the IRS, the Federal Bureau of Prisons, and the State Departments of Corrections from sharing prisoner tax information. Three years ago, a law was passed to address that, but there was a snag and it took lengthy negotiations to get a memorandum of understanding, known as a MOU, between all parties to finally start sharing prisoner tax information. Would you say because of the lack of the memorandum of understanding, a lot of prisoners did get away with filing false claims? Yes. They did. Louisiana finally signed the agreement nine months ago. We did sign the MOU. We have had six referrals from the IRS back to us, offenders that were in our custody who have filed uh, fraudulent claims. They did not receive their refund, uh, but they did file fraudulent claims, and we are currently investigating those six cases right now. Until the IRS and prison authorities can control or even prevent these fake claims, it's going to continue costing taxpayers like you and the federal government 
millions of dollars. The more fraud you have, the less money that goes to the Treasury, and so therefore revenues have to be increased. It makes everybody's income tax bill go up. The IRS sent us a statement saying they, quote, prevent the vast majority of refunds from fraudulently going to inmates. Still in 2009, though, records show the IRS paid out $40 million across the country in prisoner refunds, and it has not been able to get that money back. For the 9 News I team, I'm Kieran Chawla.